Hello friends, Jared here. So this is our first live conference show since the pandemic. We are excited to be back out there mixing it up with the community once again. If you're an organizer and want to bring JS Party to your event, hit us up, jsparty at changelog.com. This is JS Party, your weekly celebration of JavaScript and the web. If you're new to the pod, don't forget to subscribe. Head to jsparty.fm for all the ways. And if you're a longtime party animal, thank you. We appreciate you listening. Check out our membership program at changelog.com slash plus plus. Drop the ads, get bonuses like extended episodes, and directly support the show. Thanks to our friends at Fastly for shipping JS Party all around the world to wherever you listen. Check them out at Fastly.com. Okay, you know what time it is. It's party time, y'all. Quick note as we get started. Live shows often have dicey audio, and this one is no exception. So please bear with us until we're back in our studio setups. Okay, kicking it off is Remix's director of developer experience and the organizer of RemixConf. It's Kent C. Dodds. Hey, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to were... JS Party. <laughs> we <had a> party. <laughs> this is a live recording. And at a real party, too, in person. A legit party. Yes. An after party, in fact, for Remix Conference. Woo! Super exciting. Yeah, it's really exciting. <laughs> and I'm here with Ellie. I'm Divya. And we are also here with Kent, Kent. C. Dodds. <laughs> Happy to be here. Yeah, Kent organized Remix Conf and also is part of like the Remix community. Do you want to talk more about Remix Conf? And yeah, I would love that? to talk more about Remix Conf. So thank you so much for coming and being here at the conference. So Remix is a web framework. We talked at length about it a couple episodes ago. So you can go back and we'll link to that. But uh, yeah, so it's a web framework for building awesome websites. And when I joined the team back in November, I thought we just should do a conference. I don't know. That was like that was one of the first things that I, I did was start that up. We just barely open sourced. But I knew that we had a, a good community going already with the closed source thing. And so I figured we could probably get 300 to 350 people in Salt Lake if I had the right team to organize a conference and put things together. So I got the right team. And we, we got the same group. It's Zero Slope Events, same group that does React Rally. They've done a couple of React Conf, NG Conf, yeah, a bunch of tech conferences. They're amazing. We're in the same venue as React Rally has been in the past, and we got 330-ish people at the conference. So that's awesome. That's actually really impressive turnaround on a conference too. <laughs> yeah. I feel like these things like take forever to plan. So like six months or so is pretty impressive. I feel actually pretty <laughs> yeah. proud of that accomplishment. Like, yeah, pat yourself on the back for that. Yeah, that's yeah, huge. <laughs> <laughs> what made you guys want to? have a conference in the first place, considering it's like a project and you're building the community. So what was the impetus for that? Yeah, yeah. So actually, I was thinking about a Remix conference before I even joined Remix. I was like, okay. boy, it sure would be cool to have a Remix conference. Because I've been using Remix before I joined for over a year, and I just loved it. I, I didn't want to talk about anything else. And so when I joined the team, uh, this was after they'd gotten funded, and we just said, like, one of the, our primary goals was adoption. And Remix is basically an evolution of React Router. So we already have really good adoption. Like, basically, 7 in 10 React apps are using React Router. So there's a lot. <laughs> but we want also to just highlight the, what the community is doing with the server aspect of what React Router is, which is now Remix. So I think the idea was we wanted to get people together so that we could help them inspire each other to know what cool things that you can do with Remix. And, and the, also like share some of the things that we've been working on. And that was Michael Jackson's keynote. It was just like, here's a, a bunch of things that we're working on. And now I'm done. Let's hand it off to the community. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is like definitely not a, like a moneymaker for us or anything. We're just trying to highlight the community. That's awesome. And I want to shout you out for doing a lot of unique things for this conference, too, of having us go out into the city and get lunch in groups today. I thought that was really unique. I've never seen that at a conference before. And then having this event tonight and the hack 
at Hang last night. Oh, so yeah. lots of really, really cool events. And I also really liked the single track and the speakers were amazing. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, we borrowed a lot of ideas and some of these ideas were my own. I've been to a lot of conferences and a lot of things that I like and some things I don't like <laughs> about the conferences. <laughs> and so you'll notice like we do have music, but you will still be able to hear other people talk <laughs> when you're at this after party. Um, lots of conferences, it's just like blaring music. You have to yell at each other. But <laughs> So the, like eating out in the city that I borrowed from React Rally. And we also gave our speakers some spending money in the city. Because like when you go to speak, you don't want to leave with less money than you came. Like that's sure. kind of annoying. Like that's the whole idea yeah, is like cheap. I can go for free. So yeah, yeah, that also I borrowed from React Rally. Nice. Um, but one thing that was an original idea that I'm really proud of is we also had backup speakers. That's not original, but we recorded the backup speakers talks last night and they'll be put onto the YouTube channel like usual. And so I've been a backup speaker before and it's, you're in this weird place where you're like, I hope that somebody gets sick, but I actually (laughs) don't. So so, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely not. So yeah, that was one thing that I'm excited that they'll be able to be heard, right? Like the, they put a lot of work and effort into preparing those talks. So I also put uh, the Twitter avatars on the badges. That's so, also smart. Yeah. Yeah, so people can recognize you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, unless Everybody your Twitter picture is like yeah. 10 years before your current one, which I think many of us are like guilty oh, yeah. of doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah for like, sure. We've definitely so. changed in the last two years of oh, not <laughs> going to conferences. <laughs> So yeah, at absolutely. least I have. Oh, same, so, same, yeah. same. Yeah. And plus the people with drawings too is their profile That's pictures. Uh-huh. That's true. Yeah. Fair, yeah. That also really helps. So yeah. You yeah. So it, it was super fun. And after conference day, now I have a lot of ideas of cool things that we'll do next year. That's awesome. And it keeps going tomorrow too. You all are doing the hangout mm-hmm. day. Yeah. Yeah. So originally I wanted to take everybody to Lagoon. It's this uh, theme park, you like go on roller coasters oh, and stuff. But they're only open on weekends in May. So oh, okay. <laughs> I'm so somehow unsurprised yeah. that you wanted to take yeah. people to an amusement park. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> my jam. That's, like, that's what I do for fun. It's logistically challenging to do stuff like sure. that. Um, yeah. I was like, but I still want people to feel like they can go out and do something fun. And so I just came up with this idea to think of all like a ton of fun things that people could do and that they would do with each other if they just had like the inspiration to do that. And so we've got, I don't know, probably a list of 20 things and places people can go. And we had one person run a marathon actually on Saturday, like a half a marathon uh, from that. And we had a bunch of people playing pickleball and disc golf. And I actually went on one wheel ride with a bunch of folks today, which is (laughs) sweet. And uh, yeah, and then tomorrow people are going to be going out and doing fun stuff. So really, this is 100%. Like, like I said, we're not making any money off this. In my mind, if we end up with more money than at the end of all of this. And that's a failure in my mind because we could use that money to do something cooler for the conference. Uh, and so it's 100% huge thank you to the sponsors because this wouldn't have been possible without that. And we just want to get the community together and, and have like the conversations that you have in an in-person conference. So. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. Should we well, yeah, let's talk no, to let's some, get some speakers? speakers out. Yeah. Right, I'm going to leave now. Thanks, everybody. And I'm going to hand this over to some speakers. So right. thank you for having me. Yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. Thanks thank for you. having us. Our first speaker as a guest is Henri Helvetica with Webpage Test. Hello, Henri. We have liftoff. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Bonsoir. I got to say good evening to both of you. I haven't seen either of you in like, well, years. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I I mean, we met for the first time in like Amsterdam before all of this craziness happened. I feel like it was just Confi U. Yeah, or the Mozilla conference. Yeah. Viewsource? Oh, you are correct. Yeah. I think it was Viewsource, maybe. Yeah. I thought it was Jay Confi U. (laughs) <laughs> the same Either thing. way. Same week. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm happy to see both of you guys. Yeah. Ladies, pardon me. So it's been a hot minute. And I was yeah. actually, when I found out this was happening, I'm like, oh my God, I totally remember this. Because I think I attended one and I can't remember where it was, but it was a lot of fun then too. Yeah, so that's awesome. I think live podcasts are kind of cool. Yeah, cool. and a lot has changed for you. You're at Real Web Page Test now. Yeah. Hey, You're doing merci. stuff there. Yeah, yeah. you know, having yeah. fun. Tell us Just, more about yeah. that. Introduce yourself to while oh, okay. you're doing that, because um, everybody who's listening, yeah, we know you, but... Uh. So, hello, bonsoir, all the listeners out there, my name is Henri, 
and I'm mostly known as Henri Alverca on Twitter. That Netscape avatar that you thought you saw, you did see. <laughs> and I'm here at RemixConf in Salt Lake City. And I spoke earlier today and I talked about performance, but specifically with regards to a company I work for, which is WebPitchTest by Catchpoint, and where we live and breathe performance, user experience, and, you know, in part, developer experience now as well. So, yeah, it's a pile of fun. Yeah, it was cool to see you walk through that process of using real web page test and the different parts of it that yeah. people might not be using. Because yeah. I think there are parts of web page tests that I'm like, let me just run it through and yeah. see what the LCP is, and yeah. that's all I care about, and yeah. that's it. And, then and I totally it. understand that. You yeah. know, that that's just natural. You know, we've grown accustomed to with whatever product we use. It does something well that we like, mm -hmm. and we just kind of dive in and use it for that and just get out. But considering sort of like the environment that has been sort of created of late where performance is really being discussed more prominently, I think it's there needs to be some discussion about like the features that are available to them that they might not know about and specifically what they do. And yeah. the biggest picture, I'd say bigger, but I think the biggest picture overall is what I talked about, which is performance literacy. I think that I'm not saying it's not there, but generally, I think it could improve. And that's going to be sort of like my mandate this year, for sure, my campaign. And it's just to show people, have them understand what's going on, why they need to particularly pay attention to like one part or understand what it means. Definitely. I think especially in the framework space, mm. like the CSS, HTML, JavaScript developers mm. have always really talked about performance a lot and those yeah. conferences always bring it up in a lot of their talks yeah. but today was really unique it react <laughs> remix yeah. conference yeah. to be speaking about performance in almost all of the talks yeah. so i thought that was really cool and different yeah. compared to a lot it, it, of it felt of very perf now yeah you know yeah. <laughs> there you uh, go. exactly it's you know i have to say this you know when i first found out that this conference was happening it was immediately on my radar because I felt Remix was like buzzing. And I also felt that they had been so adamant and sort of indicating to people, letting them know that they were pretty performant and using our tool. So I just could not miss that. But A, I was happy I came. And B, I remember maybe like three days out, I was looking at the actual speaker lineup and their abstracts. And I couldn't believe the amount of performance conversations that were taking place. And... I come from a moment in time where it was myself and that was it. And to have like ongoing talks about like little performance here and there and, you know, your LCP is going to improve. You, know, you might remember 2019 mm -hmm. during my keynote, yeah. you know, I said at Performance Now in Amsterdam, I said like Lighthouse is largely responsible for what's going on in terms of like people chatting about it. And yeah. now you add Lighthouse, Core Red Vitals, and there's like a huge tent of people who are pretty interested. And that's why I think, you know, when I joined Webpage Test, it was like the best time on earth to be into performance right now. There are so many people to, who want more information. Yeah, and it, Lighthouse is such an entry point for so many people, but still so many people don't even know about that. Like I talk about it in some of my talks about like SEO and yeah. writing blog posts that are good. Yeah. Just like, hey, also send, send your blog through a Lighthouse test because yeah. it will affect your Google ranking. And people are like, oh, I never heard about this before. Yeah. So You know, it's interesting because Lighthouse, if I remember correctly, Lighthouse really started as like a PWA tool. Yeah. And then they added like uh, performance, SEO, best practices, accessibility, and the PWA is still there. And now it basically has been transformed, co-opted as a performance tool. Like no one cares about anything else. Yeah. You know, it's like, what's your Lighthouse, <laughs> Lighthouse score? score yeah. And they're yeah. not like, Post it on Twitter. oh, here's my <laughs> SEO score. Like SEO, what's that? <laughs> what's your performance score, bro? You know, so... <laughs> It has become synonymous to performance, which is really interesting, right? Yeah. Because that's where the people chose to take it. And now it's like, okay, so today it was about like, okay, let me show you the details about these scores and these times that you see. And there's a lot more to it. So it's, uh, no, I had a great time today to open the, the post keynote talk, which again, I didn't know till about 48 hours before. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, well... Is Kent still here? 
I was actually supposed to be a pre-recorded talk. Oh, got it. And got it. Uh, then I got the call. They're like, you've been supersized. You know, <laughs> you've been promoted. <laughs> yeah, you've been promoted. <laughs> yeah. And then I got the top slot and I was like, all right, you know, let's go have some fun. Yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah, man. How you, you know, how are things with you too? Like everything's love, work good. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Having lots of fun, building stuff, talking to people. Yeah. What else can you ask for, right? <laughs> I yeah. guess so. I mean, it's interesting because I, I'm interested in the work that you do and like Tim and the team that you are working with is wonderful at Real Web Page Test. Yeah. And it's interesting, at least looking at the trajectory that I've been moving towards. So I did a lot of front end and I, now I'm pretty much full stack towards the end of the stack, not the front. <laughs> and I'm actually curious if from your experience and working on real web page tests, what the trends look like as people start talking more about server-side rendered apps, you see Next.js bringing up their things and Remix is doing, I guess they call themselves center stack, I guess full stack, but I'm, I'm wondering if you see that in the trends or at least in the data that you guys are collecting. That's a very interesting question and you may get an even more interesting answer. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> The one thing uh, that I realized is that having sort of run the Jamstack Toronto meetup and yeah. being exposed there, everything that's going on with what you discussed is still such a small part of the web. It's mm -hmm. obviously very new, very well discussed and in our little bubble, but you break out of that and it's like, this is not the yeah, main discussion. Yeah, people are still building websites. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is not the main rest, discussion. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And That's so true. I'll be frank. I'm really spending a lot of time watching what's happening on the WordPress side because some of you may or may not know, last fall, they officially announced a performance team, a core performance team. So I was like, oh, my ears cool. were like, okay. Mm -hmm. So I've been following them closely. I mean, I, I think I told this to someone earlier today. Douglas Crockford once said, how's the code go again? Basically, the front end is like a disaster. You know what I mean? That's where your problems will keep coming up day in, day out. Not saying that, you know, with all mm -hmm. that's happening in sort of like the modern development side that, you know, we don't, we shouldn't keep an eye on that. But just it's still such a small pie yeah. that, you know, there's so many like bigger problems to take on. And they're more in the classic Mm -hmm. front end back end split so that's fair what are you most excited about working on at web page test now is there like a new feature that you're working on or what's new what's upcoming i mean can i ask my lawyer first you know, <laughs> read your nda over did time. you sign yeah did you sign an nda <laughs> okay <laughs> apparently nothing's happening you know okay um, yeah you know i will say this i get back to the literacy idea okay because yeah. That means it's like having workshops. That means it's like presenting. That means mm -hmm. it's being able to have conversations with people about performance where they can speak from like a more learned place, mm -hmm. you know? And so this education that needs to take place and that's going to take place this year, I think is a lot of fun. It's almost like, you know, the early days, say of like Jamstack, you're like, oh, this is kind of yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. And then watching it sort of like, snowball into what it is now and the whole just idea you know mm -hmm. again i know people argued about the name and yada 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 i start to call it like just a modern stack you know yeah. like what is going on it's modern development let's go but yeah that's i'm excited about that i'm excited about helping okay. people sort of like unlock when they're looking at like data you know yeah. and metrics and be like oh i know what's going on here yeah i guess that makes sense because as long as we're building for the web, regardless of what framework, stack, 100%. technology, whatever, it's always just going to, the browser's going to render it and performance is going to come into play. And you're just going to wait for the results. You know, yeah. That's it. You know, so. That's great. And the literacy will always, there's always yeah. a need there. Yeah. And I mean, so, just yeah. like any web development, you know, it's like there's literacy that needs to, to yeah. be achieved for people to be able to speak in that sort of like confidence where they're like, oh, here's what's going on there. And da, 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 da. You know, I have to give a shout out to my team, everyone out at WPT, as we call it, Tim, Scott, Jeff, JQ, Gina, uh, God, Michaela, <laughs> William. All the other people. You know, yeah, yeah. The like, entire Catchpoint team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, Catchpoint the is like, arcade. and the webpage test is like, yeah. you know, yeah. like this, but we're trying to do great work and uh, hopefully people could come along and be part of it. 
That's awesome. That's yeah, exciting. Man. Hopefully, I'll be on your podcast soon. Yeah. Oh, know, yeah. So I would love to have you at some point. Really that would cool. be great. Yeah, yeah, we something a bit more formal. Time. Like, I've been having some back channel talks. All right. You know, so, but we could continue yeah, that yeah. afterwards. Yeah, well, we'll keep you know? talking. Yeah, yeah. 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 I got some paperwork we could sign. Perfect. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. let's go. All right. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks for Thanks for talking with us. No, by all means, man. Ladies, thank you. Who's up next? Oh, there we go. Story blocks in the building. Let's go. Here comes Arisa Fukuzaki, a DevRel engineer at Storyblock. Arisa, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Do you, you want to introduce yourself? And I know you gave the Storyblock talk. So yeah, can you speak more to that as well? Sure, sure. So my name is Arisa, and I'm originally from Japan, but living in Germany. So Storyblock is a headless CMS, mm-hmm. and I work in there as a developer relations engineer. Not just only, you know, at the CMS, what it makes it being unique is that we have the real-time visual editor. So um, whatever you make the content changes, you can take a look at it and see in one screen. We are based on the atomic design methodology, means that you can reuse the components as many as you want. And you can nest the, these, you know, reusable components in any levels. So you can only... For example, like define only necessary components that you need, then you don't need to duplicate unnecessary, you know, overwrapped components. Mm-hmm. So that's what we have in here um, for today's talk. I was showing that, let's say, choices of choosing the technologies. I was showing as one of the example that imagine that if you are, for example, like in your everyday life, when you face something non-user-friendly interface, then maybe in the end you will be able to get something you wanted to have, but the journey until you will be able to get these, let's say, the things you wanted to have or the things you wanted to achieve, it's not gonna be nice. So same thing could be transferred or like would be applied for, let's say, like in tech world. So I was showing like how resilient, fast, very smooth and organized experience you can get from, let's say, Storyblock and the Remix. Because on the fly, Remix already provides a very nice way to dynamically handle the routes. So let's say like anyone who doesn't have the developer experience, they can easily create nested routes dynamically from, let's say, the dashboard and the visual editor. And developers can, you know, focus on their own work stuff like that so that's something what i was giving a talk today yeah oh cool so that means like with the way story or the way you're using or story block works with remix is can you speak more to that it's just like the routing layer and how the components get loaded yeah yeah, sure sure sure. yeah sure so the thing is like once you define components from the story block side yeah by giving a name of the component and by giving the levels of the components how you want to nest and the okay. next step you can do at the Remix side is that, well, you can, first of all, like define the component to be dynamically being rendered. Okay. And to do that, we provide the JSON, fi- uh, JSON files for draft version and the published version. And then oh, there, for draft and publish, there's yeah, separate yeah, yeah. JSON files. Mm-hmm. So okay. um, if you want to see, for example, cleaner version of the draft JSON, you can just take a look at the published version because for draft version, we have additional property okay. to show all these components are editable. Okay. But you don't yeah. need to see that in published components. I see. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Because it's a post. So if someone were publishing mm-hmm. like a blog or something, I mean, with yeah. Storyblock, that's what you're doing, right? Got so, it. Okay. Yeah. CMS. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So what you can take a look at from these, let's say, draft JSON is that you can mm-hmm. see all the components are in an array object. So mm-hmm. you can see that if you want to dynamically return these components, you can actually use the map to, you know, like render. Wait, sorry, say that again. Oh, sorry. You can actually map these, you know, array object so that you don't have to worry about to manually create, for example, like, let's say the component files and then need to worry about to create the logic to manually, you know, render these Mm -hmm. components. You can just call one API that is provided from our SDK. In okay. Remix case, you can just use our React SDK. So you can call one of the APIs that is fully equipped 
to handle all the dynamic, let's say, component rendering part. Mm -hmm. So conditionally, it will decide, like, if there is, like, the dynamic components are there, mm -hmm. then it's going to return. But if not, then maybe you can put some nice error handling to show, like, hey, the name of the component doesn't exist, stuff like that. And you don't have to, you know, worry about to build these kind of, mm -hmm. let's say, workflow by yourself. You can just call this API and you just, like, call this API as a JS JSX component. Everything is all set. So okay. you don't need to worry about what kind of components the users are going to um, define, let's say, inside of another component. Mm -hmm. Everything is already set in there. Okay. Yeah. How have you been enjoying like the conference and working with Remix? Oh, I am really enjoying a lot. And I need to say that, or I need to insist that this is one of the best conference I've ever at attended. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, this is my third time like joining in-person conference. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. Nice. Oh, ever. Ever, yes, uh, cool. ever, oh, wow. ever, uh, yeah, cool. yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, because I started to speak in conferences yeah. like after the pandemic. Okay, so okay. I attended more online conferences uh -huh. as speakers, so as attendees. So this is my third time, but even so, it's really like one of the special ones because I mean, like I feel that I know a lot of not just the speakers but even the attendees. I got a chance to you know be able to talk to them, so I feel like I know more of, let's say, the folks joining in here closely, as well as, like, yeah, I was able to, you know, like, do some funny or, like, fun activities. Mm -hmm. For example, like, I was going to the dinner, and there was a Kent. He was asking, like, do you want to do, like, one wheel? And I'm like, oh, yes, please, <laughs> I really want to do that. The one wheel has been really popular. Yeah. 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 I'm terrified, though. Like, yeah, absolutely I, not. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm impressed by your bravery. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm really enjoying the conference itself. I mean, the talk was also like, went really smooth. The reason why I'm saying is that, well, Michael from Remix team, he knows because we attended in one another conference together in Amsterdam. And yeah. funny thing is like, during my talk, there was a fire alarm going on and there was like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, the monitors on the stage, it really hated my laptop to, you know, connected so I had like I think anything that I could get to mm -hmm. be stressed out <laughs> so compared to that Remix Conf went really smooth I simply yeah, really that's, enjoyed that's rough anything smooth compared to that yeah. <laughs> but it's been an awesome event Cool, cool, cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, this yeah. is really, inf I mean, yeah. I've only used Storyblock as is, but never with Remix. So this is actually really interesting and your talk was very informative. So thank you. Yeah, thank yeah, you so thank much. Thank you too. Thank you too. Yeah. Up next, we have Anthony Frainer, a senior software engineer at Shopify. Wow, this mic looks like it's been beat up. Ooh, I'm kind that of scared of the previous people that were talking here. <laughs> yeah. I think that was a result of a mic drop, potentially. Oh, yeah, yeah, an actual <laughs> mic I would drop, imagine. Yeah. 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 yeah, a literal one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so this is web speed test. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to, I, I mean, I don't... I don't want to say the AV people might kill me for <laughs> letting you my drop. So maybe don't do that. But yeah, probably a bad idea. Definitely. But well, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, thanks for being on. I think this is the on. first time I've met both of you. So okay. it, a pleasure to be here. Yeah, yeah super too. nice to meet you too. Do you want to introduce yourself to the listeners as well and maybe give the like Cliff Notes version of your talk from today too? Okay, well, it all started when I was born. Yeah. <laughs> the Cliff Notes version of me, I have, my name is Anthony Frainer. That's a really tough last name, so that's how you say it. I've been working at Shopify for only about six months or so. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, wow. But at Shopify, I have the privilege of working with a group of really intelligent, smart people working on a brand new framework called Hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And Hydrogen's, kind of the whole thing behind Hydrogen was just making headless e-commerce for Shopify better. Mm -hmm. And along with like big bets on like React server components and things like that, mm -hmm. my task lately has been to kind of take that value that these intelligent people have worked on for making headless e-commerce better for Hydrogen, pull it out of Hydrogen and make it better for everyone now. The goal is to make, make it great for anyone, whether you're using, you know, Vercel or, or Remix or whoever. So does that 
when you say that, you mean make it agnostic? Yeah. Framework agnostic. Okay. Yeah, React framework agnostic. And we have, okay, cool. you know, tentative grand plans for maybe even going outside of React and stuff. But we're, okay. we've got to take small steps before yeah. we can take those big ones. But React's a pretty safe bet. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good place to start, it feels like. Yeah. Uh -huh. For sure, for sure. That's awesome. That's really cool to hear about. Like the headless e-commerce space is so big right now. I have a good friend, Kelly Vaughn, who's like very involved in the Shopify space. So I get to oh, hear about it from her a lot. <laughs> but it's really, really cool. Um, tell us about how Hydrogen works with Remix. Like, do you use it as your routing layer or, or how does it work? No, the goal for this package that I that I that we've been working on is essentially components, it's going to be called Hydrogen UI, so it is a separate package than Hydrogen itself. But yeah, so it's components and it's hooks and kind of the things that I showed in the talk as well that are helpful for GraphQL queries and things like that. And maybe there's some stuff in there that's useful for anything, like that GraphQL helper function that I showed that was like, hey, you're not using these fields in your GraphQL query. Maybe you should remove them, make your query more optimized. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that has the potential for just being used anywhere that's you're yeah. querying GraphQL. Yep. And so, again, there's lots of big plans, but we're still kind of pushing to try and get our first release out. And then once that's done, now we can take a breath and then take a look at the wider ecosystem and say, how can we make things better for everybody? So Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love how that's become such a strategy within the web dev space of having some open source or free project that just helps everybody. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you still have a company behind it, but you have this product completely detached from it, from like Next.js and Vercel, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that's really cool. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see, like you say, the open sourceness of everything and everything going open. And the other part, you know, I'm fairly new to Shopify, so I don't want to like toe the line too much or whatever you want to call <laughs> that. But... There is a big emphasis on at Shopify of this isn't a zero sum game, or in other words, we don't have to make it so we are the winner and everyone else is mm -hmm. a loser. We want to yeah. make it so everybody wins if we can. And obviously, if we can do well in the process, that's great, and we can all have jobs and stuff. But but the goal is to really just help out the broader ecosystem and help everybody. And you kind of see some of that not only in this work that you know we're doing in Hydrogen UI, but also just in in React itself with like React server components and things like that, providing feedback and, and trying to make that proposal better. So, yeah. You've talked a bit about like making it React agnostic. So what mm -hmm. are the plans so far? Cause so you have it working with Remix, you have it working with, I guess, vanilla React and Next.js, I think too, is that? Yeah, Something so that, the package yeah. itself isn't released yet. So that's the okay. fun part is okay. like, this is <laughs> okay. all, yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is all like, almost feels like a, an Apple keynote of like, hey, this is where we want to be in maybe six months or less time or, yeah. you know, but yeah. this is like a future looking type feel to it. But the goal is to make it so it works in Remix and, and kind of I alluded to in my talk as well is like, we really do want these tight integrations with other frameworks to make sure that we're doing it right for you. So in fact, last week we noticed that Netlify, for example, had built their a hydrogen adapter for their new Netlify edge computing that's built on Dino and stuff yeah. like that. We noticed that we had broken something on in their adapter through one of our releases and hadn't yeah. really paid attention. Uh -huh. So we fixed it, but then we also worked with Netlify to say, hey, we're now going to do preview, like deploys on every commit mm -hmm. so we can check out hydrogen on Netlify and make sure it's working there okay. and stuff like that. So. Yeah, there's the goal to just make it work everywhere eventually, but... So is there actually... Um, are you working with different, like, deployment platforms to make sure that Hydrogen works on them? Because there's obviously intricacies to how that works. Mm -hmm. So what's that process like? Yeah, it's been interesting. And again, most credit goes... It hasn't been me. I've just been sitting in the background. Most credit goes to the intelligent team that, that <laughs> I'm a part of. But yeah, we've worked very closely with Cloudflare mm -hmm. specifically to make sure things work there. And having Slack channels where we can talk and collaborate and make sure things are working well. Shopify itself is actually working on its own deployment platform. And so oh, that's, really? Yeah, and so that's another place where we've been All working right. with our own internal team to be like, okay, well, is this working there? And, okay. and having yeah. preview deploys and so, yeah. Super interesting. Remind me to talk to you about AWS. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool, cool. 
what are you excited to work on since you just started on hydrogen and like what's the thing that most excites you about that project the most exciting thing about hydrogen for me is I really enjoy working on developer tooling and making just developers' lives better. And so I really like working on things like, right now, currently, we have Vite under, you know, as our bundler and doing all that stuff. Yeah. And we have a super intelligent person, Fran, that has that all that integration. And I'm just absorbing all of that knowledge, trying to absorb all that knowledge from these people and learning how to make Vite to make hydrogen run better and stuff like that. So I really enjoy developer tooling and standard specs. That's more outside of hydrogen, but yeah, like working on standards is kind of weird, but I actually really enjoy that stuff too. And I, I, I've only done a tiny bit of it, but when I do it, it's super satisfying. So I'm kind That's of weird awesome. that way. There's yeah. something really awesome about building developer tools as a developer yourself and like being able to work on something that's for your persona. And so it sounds like you get to do that at your job. Yeah, a little bit. And it's super fun. And I, like I said, I get to learn from these super intelligent people. And, and when I have time, I go out and, and look at these new proposals that, that are happening and, and try to provide feedback where I can and things like that. So, you know, working on the current one I'm excited about now is like this new app history or a navigation API for the web to kind of oh, replace history.push state and okay. all that oh. stuff. And so there's, there's a lot of work going on there. And again, I'm, I'm not doing much there, but I'm just sitting there kind of in the background yeah. watching and learning and, and maybe once every month or so being like, hey, what about this type thing? But yeah. <laughs> Did you work on e-commerce prior to Shopify itself or like e-commerce dev tooling itself? So unintentionally, I have worked in a doing a lot of e-commerce throughout my job history, I guess, but it, it was never intentional. It's just, that's what I, I always happened to be working on. So my first job was working for a local company here and making their website and mm -hmm. migrating it from Magento to Shopify, which at the time, you know, I had no idea I was going to be working for them. Mm -hmm. And then another company I worked for local, building a custom platform to integrate all these different e-commerce things and into like a dashboard so you can see how well your products are selling and stuff like that. So it's kind of been like an accidental, like, hey, I, I kind of understand e-commerce, I guess. But. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting because developer tools itself is a niche uh -huh. in and of itself in all of development. And then e-commerce dev tools is like a niche yeah. within that niche because it's very specific. The problems that people have in e-commerce when they build e-commerce sites are very different than if they were building another type of website, right? So Yeah, totally. And that's one of the reasons I think for me, Remix really stood out is e-commerce is so focused on performance, so focused on you know, how well is your website running and time to first bite and SEO stuff. And Remix just seems like a great fit for that. And hopefully, you know, Hydrogen is too. And, and so, yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for chatting with us. It was awesome to meet you. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Emily Kaufman is an amateur human, her words, and a professional software engineer at Harvey. How's awesome. it going? Good. I guess I've never met you guys, so I'll introduce yeah, myself yeah, to you. Yeah, that would be awesome. My name's Emily Kaufman. I was one of the backup speakers from yesterday. Oh, cool. Okay. So kind of cornered me over there and was like, hey, you know, there's your <laughs> podcast going on. Perfect. So. That's welcome. Awesome. Yeah, That's welcome. Nice guys. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and then also what your talk was about? Sure. So my name's Emily. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I work for a company called Harvey, which is a grocery delivery service okay. where all of the food comes from local farms and producers. So we've spent the last two years doing performance and uh, mm -hmm. that kind of led us to remix in the past couple of months. So it's mm -hmm. basically what I've been doing is writing our site in remix and it's been awesome. It's been a lot of fun. That's so cool. It's really cool to hear about a company using Remix in production, too, because it's it's pretty new as far as these dev tools go. I would love to hear about your experience there and what the challenges right. were, but also the really high points as well. So we're not quite to production Not yet. quite to production. Okay, <laughs> yeah, sorry. So, um, it's a big Symfony application. So over the last year, we've been slowly moving it to React. So 
we have it in React now. And so we have been doing comparisons of our existing React site into mm -hmm. what it would look like in Remix. And the high points have just been, that we're, you, I guess you guys were talking about Lighthouse scores. <laughs> Ours was 32 without Remix. Using the same components, it was a 97. Wow, so, wow. that's huge. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that kind of stuff has been really exciting for me, just seeing like those changes, and that was not that many weeks of work to get it to that point. So, Had you used another framework prior to Remix? What was the reason for reaching for it in the first place? I mean, part of it was I did it on a weekend because I <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> wanted something to play with. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I bet this would, like, this would be pretty cool. And I showed it to my boss, and he was like, wow, you're like, yeah, we should try to keep working on this and just see, because performance has always kind of been an issue uh, with okay. our application. Because it used to be a small, if you're familiar with like a CSA, it's a oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, community supported agriculture where you kind of get like a box from a farm. Yeah. And two years ago, at the, before the pandemic, we had like 40 products that you could, you know, like get. And because everyone wanted grocery delivery service, we grew to like 500 products over oh, the wow. last short amount of time. And it, it kind of crashed our page. <laughs> so that was one of the reasons we were looking for something to help that performance. Mm -hmm. Can you speak more to the stack or like what it was like before you moved to Remix itself um, and what that migration was like? I mean, you haven't pushed the production, but right. I'm just curious yeah. what yeah, the yeah, stack yeah. process so was like. They were all Twig templates originally. So we kind of okay. set up a React, like a single page application. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like intertwined with the Symfony application. And then as part of our performance stuff we were doing, we did we kind of split out our admin code versus like our member code. So mm -hmm. I'm just focusing on member right now, but okay. I built a components library. So I was able to pull out a bunch of like, you know, like the buttons and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that made it a lot easier to move over yeah, because sure. I just like basically set up all these new routes that matched what we had. Because you just, already had the component and library. And I already had the components, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that, I mean, I wanted to do that anyway for mm -hmm. fun, but this was like a good way to justify it and say like, it'll make it take a lot less time if we can just have a lot of that. But yeah, it's been fun. So I guess it didn't take any convincing, really, <laughs> for no, the team so to move to it. I don't exactly know the story, but I guess yeah. my COO hired Ryan at one point in the okay. past. Oh, wow. And so I was working on trying to figure out how to convince everyone that we should move to Remix. Okay. And my COO posts in our Slack channel. It's like, hey, have you guys heard about Remix? I think we should use it. And I was like, actually, were you, <laughs> I using, you about were that. Were you using React Router at before? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I guess then it's sort of related. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we're on, we're on an older version of React Router, and since they just released that upgrade path, yeah. I've started working on that. Oh, cool. Okay. So, you yeah. know, maybe I'll just, like, switch some of it to Remix and no one will mm -hmm. notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it definitely helps if you you have the infrastructure in place or you are right. already using React Router because then yeah. it yeah. sort of integrates yeah. really nicely with Remix right. instead of having to, like, you aren't using it, and then you move to... Re I'm actually curious about that migration strategy. Yeah, well, I'll have to find someone who has done that. And <laughs> our, our member site is a single-page application. Our okay. admin is not. We're not using React Router there. Ah, so okay. that is something I'm So that one is using out. Remix also, or it will be? It's not using Remix yet, but okay. I think it will eventually. Cool. I'm trying to figure out if we need to do like a rewrite of just everything to get it. Yeah. It's just so... It's like Twig. A lot of it's just Twig templates oh, wow. and cool. PHP, yeah. which, I can Throw struggle that. through if I need to. But <laughs> yeah. Red. Nice. Yeah. I think Shandai called the people who write PHP dinosaurs earlier. So that, <laughs> that's me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah. there are people who write PHP. The Laravel community the majority, is huge, right? yeah, by right. the way. And there are people who still write Laravel and they are a very interesting, awesome community. So I don't know. I take issue with that comment personally. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks so much yeah, for chatting with for us. It was really chatting. cool to hear your story. Nice yeah, to meet you thank guys. You. Nice to meet you. Joining the party next, it's the CEO of Clearly Innovate, Aaron Saunders. My name is Aaron Saunders. I was one of the backup speakers also. I did not get promoted. Uh, All right. I still did my speak last night. <laughs> yeah. I found that about Remix through just evaluation of software. Okay. I run a software development firm in Washington, D.C., and we are always trying to find the cheapest, most effective way to kind of build solutions for clients. And I saw the post, and so I started playing with it for a weekend. And then I have a YouTube channel, so I did a couple of videos on it. That's awesome. And 
then when I think Kent mentioned that they were going to do the conference, he said, hey, you should go for a talk. And so I did. I put my, threw my hat in the ring. I didn't make the final cut, but I was just happy to be here. I haven't spoken at a conference in almost 15 years now. Oh, wow. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. So, um, and it's one of the things that when I talk to kids and other folks getting into tech, I always say, you got, you got to just put yourself out there. Yeah, so I figured definitely. I need to eat my own dog food and put myself out there. Yeah. So. Well, a YouTube channel is as well. Like <laughs> yeah, but a YouTube channel, you can sit at home, and if you don't like something, you can cut it, and you can edit it, so it's a lot different than standing up yeah. in, front of, in front of a bunch of people talking. It's still a lot of work. It is definitely yeah. a lot of work, but I enjoy it, because my, my whole passion thing is about getting more folks into tech, specifically black and yeah. brown folks into tech. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Tell us about your talk. What did you speak about? So my talk was about parameterized routes and nested routes in Remix. Okay. Um, it was... It was something that even when I was trying to learn it, reading through the documentation, I found it a little bit challenging to understand. And that my big thing on my YouTube channel is to take topics or technology that I don't want to offend anyone, but normal people won't normally run into yeah. and kind of expose it to them, but explain it to a way that they'll at least get excited enough to try it. And so that's kind of what I did. That's really cool. Can you speak to that pain points that you had when you were learning <laughs> I mean, it, it wasn't that what much was of, that like? It wasn't that much of a pain point for me, but I think, no offense to anyone, I think a lot of the assumption when you read this stuff is that you know a lot of technology. Yeah, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. There's almost kind of this, like, closed group of, are you smart enough to understand this technology? And if yeah, you're not, yeah. step to the side. And I think so, in general, that's... You, because I think it's yeah. just, like, to what level or how deep do you get yeah. when you explain something? Do you for go sure. all the way to, like, fundamentals? So, or no, do you just no. assume I, it's... I, I try to assume that you, so I do stuff on React and I do stuff on Vue. Yeah. So I sure. assume that you know what React is and I assume you know yeah. what Vue is. Mm -hmm. And then I just try to break it down to simpler concepts. And I also kind of like to give a lot of references to other things for people to look at. Yeah. To try to just build upon the concepts. Yeah. But it's really about just breaking down that kind of initial fear that people have of trying something new in technology. And that's a great sign that you know something really well, too, because if you can explain something complex to a beginner, there's no better way of showing that you really understand yeah. that thing. It's challenging. It's like, hard. I taught at the college level for a little while. And so one of the, I like people to ask questions because then through the questions, you get the feedback and you get better at explaining things. Yeah. You find out the common pain points that yes, other people are having. Yeah, the common pain points that other people will have. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so from your, uh, since you're a teacher or someone who's naturally inclined towards educating or mm -hmm. documenting and talking about your process. So from your experience, when it comes to, since you had comments around mm -hmm. how the docs for Remix works, where do you think that line is when you have to explain concepts? Like, especially because Remix introduces some newer ways of render. It's like route-based rendering, which is pretty atypical for frameworks, I right? So where do you think the explanation needs to go, not specific to Remix, but in general, if I you think, were to... I think it's almost unlearning some of the other stuff that you've learned mm -hmm. and getting back to the basics, mm -hmm. which are one of the things that I liked about Remix. Like, they take away a lot of the complexity of things. Yeah. But a lot of those things are things that when you've read other articles and saw the things you had to learn that, so you get in a specific mindset. Yeah, yeah. I think it's always funny when they bring up the, like, a lot of new developers have used... <laughs> Event dot prevent default on every yeah, yeah, form yeah, yeah. that they've ever seen. I, I think that's so funny. It's kind of like an older developer now, I feel like. But it's probably true it, for a lot of people. You see it in all the demos and all this code. It's always like, well, remember, you have to do event yeah, prevent default. Yeah, always. Always. So but you don't, hard. actually. You don't. Yeah. A lot of things, it doesn't matter anymore. But, you know, overall, I, you know, I've had a great experience. Like I said, it's been years since I've spoke at a conference. It's been since before COVID, since I've actually been at a conference. And so, you know, this is a great kind of first step back in. And then also just excited. It was great for the opportunity to talk because honestly, pre-COVID, I decided that I was going to start getting back out and doing speaking at conferences and trying to, that's when I really got into promoting my YouTube channel and stuff like that. That's awesome. Right. Well, thank you so much for thank you. chatting yeah, with us. This you. is great to meet with you. And we'll definitely shout out your YouTube channel in the show notes. And for the grand finale, we have an extended conversation with Michael Jackson, co-founder and CEO of Remix. Hello. Just, yeah. I don't think you need an introduction. Long but time follower, first time, first time caller. <laughs> first time call Wait, have you never been on the podcast? No. 
can't remember. Well, we I have to have you on that. I think I might have been because I think we had we <laughs> we, party, but it, party? we it had an like, episode on Ray Rada, I think. Yeah. At one point. And I think this you are on familiar. it. Maybe it was like a couple of years ago. Probably. Yeah. But welcome. Well, well cool. regardless. It's good, good to be back. Potentially, yeah. yeah. Maybe. We'll have to yeah. look it up and link the episode if it's But thank was you, one. thank you for having me regardless. <laughs> for sure. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Happy to be here. Yeah. It's been an awesome event and your keynote this morning was really great as thank well. You. you give a really great introduction to the history of remix and the thought behind it and then also where it is now and I think that, that was a really great story for people. Do you want to give us the like short lightning talk version the of that now? short version of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. yeah, so thank you by the way for the compliment. So the, yeah, the short version of the story is we've been developing React Router for a long, long time mm-hmm. and we, I think Ryan and I were always kind of hoping that somebody would just sort of like pick it up and run with it and take it to the next level and say, because we saw so much potential for everything, everything that we're doing now with Remix, right? Code splitting by route and data loading by route and loading and unloading styles by route and like all of the stuff that you can do with React Router, but but nobody was actually doing anything with it. And it wasn't for lack of trying either. I had like, I had like tried to convince various people, you know, like to use it and it just wasn't catching on. I tried to convince the Redwood JS team to use it. I tried to convince the next people to use it. Actually, the next, the top issue on the next issue tracker for a number of years was use React Router because I think the React community actually really liked it, but it just never happened. At one point, mm-hmm. I was talking to them about possibly doing some consulting. Anyway, it never happened. And so when COVID hit and our training business kind of, kind of took a big hit, we were just kind of like, well... I guess if nobody else is going to do it, I guess we should just do it, you know? Mm-hmm. And along the way, we're going to like do all this other good stuff too, mm-hmm. which is stuff that we really believe in. Like we're going to do progressive enhancement and we're going to make sure that it's back end agnostic and it runs in lots of different places and like just a lot of different sort of opinions that we've had that we just wanted, wanted to, to put in there as well, you know? Awesome. So. Awesome. Yeah, since you mentioned the next thing, yeah. I actually want to, <laughs> like, yeah. considering the announcement that came out yesterday around yeah. what Next was doing, and like I saw some comments yeah. around whether or not there was some inspiration taken from React Router yeah. or not. Do you want to speak to that and how that influences um, you know, what I you think, guys are I mean, doing? I think they were very forthcoming about it. Yeah. Um, on Twitter, at least. There, not, yes. not, not in the RFC, unfortunately. Sure, yeah. But, but yeah, on Twitter, you know, Sebastian came out and said, oh yeah, we took some inspiration from React Router. Yeah, you know, yeah. Which I think is pretty obvious to anybody who is kind of paying attention to this space. I honestly, I wasn't too miffed about it. The goal of Remix is not, like we have said since day one, build better websites, sometimes with Remix. Mm-hmm, yeah. And I mean it. Like, I really do mean it. So if, you know, if we have a good idea that, you know, is nested routing, which I really love. And, you know, the next team is far enough along with their implementation that I don't actually think it makes sense for them to use React Router at this point. Sure, because yeah. The, because the router is such a, an integral part of a mm-hmm. framework. Yeah. I don't think it would make any sense. They would have to, like, have massive deprecations and huge breaking yeah, changes yeah. for their whole user base, and it would be a huge pain. So if they want to just sort of take one sort of core idea, which mm-hmm. is nested layouts... Yeah which has been a huge pain point in Next for a long, long time, mm-hmm. and they want to put yeah. that in the framework, I applaud them for it. I say, yeah, you know, yeah. go for it. I will say that we've been thinking about nested routing for a long, long time, mm-hmm. and literally everything we're doing in Remix is coupled with the nested routing. So, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, the suspense that we're doing, the data fetching that we're doing, even our data mutations, even things like styling, the code splitting, Mm -hmm. like everything is coupled to the nested routing architecture, which, you know, I don't know if they have plans to like go all the way down that rabbit hole, Mm -hmm. but it goes quite deep, Mm -hmm. but we're satisfied with it. You know, we're satisfied with how well it's worked out for us and hopefully it works out well for them too. Yeah. I would say inspiration is the best form of flattery. So, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. so if they took some inspiration, I mean, yeah. 
Definitely. Yeah, it yeah, is an absolutely. open source project, so technically it's a free for all. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah like say. I'm not gonna get upset about somebody like copying an idea from my MIT licensed code. You know, like yeah. that's yeah. like I do that all the time. I look at mm-hmm. people's yeah. code and, and I'm like, that's rad. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it like that. You know. Yeah, and React Router is so such a huge part of the React community as yeah. well. Like we all grew up using React Router kind yeah. of. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm sure it's a huge inspiration. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, the router really has been like, a, it's been interesting to work on the router because I think at first we've been through several iterations and to be totally honest, we didn't know what we were doing. Like the first couple of times around that we were learning React just like everybody else. I still remember when the very first person came along and said, hey, I want to do server rendering with React Router. And it was like, what? Like we hadn't even thought about that part yet. You know, it was just kind of this little niche thing that, you know, Facebook wasn't actually server rendering with React Router. They had their whole XHP backend. And and so I didn't, anyway, we had to like evolve to support that. We had to figure that out. There were just silly bugs and things that we were doing early on, but... But it really has been a huge privilege to work on that project for so many years. I think it, I think we really, really finally hit it on the head with V6, though, I have to say. Like it, That's awesome. We sat on V5 for like five years because prior to that, we had been kind of accused of like, oh, you're moving too quickly and I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of getting exhausted with all the API change. And so I was really, really shy to push any another major version mm-hmm. until I was sure. <laughs> like, this time for sure. This is it. <laughs> I got it right. This is it. No yeah. more. I have to say, like, I'm really proud of V6. There's a lot of stuff in V6 that, like, we haven't even really talked about that much. But I think it's a good sign that, like, people are just quietly, like, shipping it and not having huge problems with it or huge mm-hmm. issues with it. That's always a great sign, right? Yeah. It's like, when- okay, it's just working for everybody. That's yeah. good. There are people yelling at you on Twitter about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, you know, we have a, we have like a really, really great story for upgrading from V5, Mm -hmm. which I think is huge. Like we care a lot about backwards compatibility. One of the coolest features in V6 is all of your routes and your links are all relative and it all works. So you can actually build like tiny React Router apps. Like you could be on the ads team and you could be on the messenger team mm-hmm. and somebody else could be on some completely different team. And you're just working on the routes at, you know, slash admin slash whatever. And then you're working on the routes at slash mm-hmm. messages slash whatever. And you can stitch those apps together into a, a larger app, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think organizationally, yeah. that's how lots of companies are split up, you know, by product, by like focus. And I think the router now is a lot more conducive to working in those large organizations, which Definitely, I think is yeah. is pretty awesome. That was a specific design goal of V6, for yeah. example. I think it was Eric's talk where he talked about the state machines piece. Yeah. So one thing I that, at least for me, has been coming up is just the persistence question in terms mm-hmm. of when you use Remix and you want a persistence layer with it. You end yeah. up having, I think Eric's demo used cookies. He's using the cookie, cookies. Yeah. I think some people might use IndexedDB maybe, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. So like, is there, or with Remix, have you guys been thinking about that particular question as to like how people will be per- answering that data persistence, persistence. That data persistence question? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so in the early days of like Rails, when Rails first came out, I remember the first time I used Rails, I could use... MySQL or Postgres or yeah. SQLite. And SQLite mm-hmm. was kind of the one that it shipped with because that yeah. was pretty easy. They could just yep. like create a file and and that was fine. And then if you wanted to like get serious, you like, mm-hmm. you know, get your Postgres database Postgres, yeah. and, and then you could connect to that, right? And I think now, like we have seen such a proliferation of databases and data architectures. It's you've, pretty hot now. You got, <laughs> you, obviously, you've got no SQL. Lots of people are just like, oh, I'm just going to use a key value store. You know, you, yep. maybe you've got an elastic search database. Maybe you've got a JSON API that you're talking to. Like there's, yeah. you know, Firebase. There's, there's so a, many. There's also like this resurgence of SQLite where everyone yeah. wants to yeah. use SQLite yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. Yeah, you all, you all at Fly are doing yeah, a lot we're with using, SQLite. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We have Lightstream yeah, Kurt, now. Kurt so actually SQLite. convinced yeah. me to, uh, I have like a, a version of Unpackage that one of these days when I'm going to get 
like some free time, I'm actually going to ship it. I promise. But it's it's all built with SQLite as a cache. Anyway, it's really cool. But I, I love SQLite. But mm -hmm. the point that I was trying to make is there are so many different options, right, for data persistence. And I have no idea, honestly, what you need for your app. There are just so mm -hmm. many different options. And so what we're doing as of now, as of Remix V1 and for the foreseeable future is yeah. we just want to give you the right touch points mm -hmm. so that you can access your data really, really easily, right? Okay. So yeah. all we care about is when are you loading the data? Mm -hmm. When are you actually running your queries? Yeah. And then also like if some of those backends are slow, how can you return a response to the user really quickly without having to wait on them, right? So that's right. the streaming work that we're doing. Yeah. The pattern in Remix is kind of like called like backend for the front end. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard that pattern before, but it, it actually works out really, really nicely, right? So if you have your data in Postgres or you have your data on GitHub and a JSON API or Wherever, something that yeah. you built, yeah, a GraphQL API, it doesn't really matter. What we care about is you know, that, that we can run all of the queries for all of your nested routes in parallel and that we can go in and generate the page. Now, again, like mm -hmm. I was saying, if some of them are slow, that's cool too. Like we'll, we'll very soon in Remix, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to ship support for React 18 streaming. Yeah. You'll be able to stream down the pieces of the page that are already ready and then, you know, just await the pieces that aren't. But I think that's the right level of abstraction in a world where we literally have no clue Mm -hmm. how you're storing your data, yeah. we're just going to help you decide, give you the right hook essentially to say, okay, we're ready for some data. You now take it from here. Yeah. So then Remix will basically be more like a framework and then you kind of pick and choose what your deployment platform is yep. as well as your database as a service, whatever that may be. Yep. And so you're essentially whoever is using Remix will have to make those decisions separately. Yeah. Yeah, you were saying earlier, like, we call ourselves kind of center stack. Yeah. And I think this yeah. really kind of gets to it, right? Because we're not we're not super opinionated about where you host. We love Fly. Yeah. We also love AWS. We love Google Cloud. Like, people deploy on Vercel, Netlify. It's totally cool, right? Mm -hmm. We're kind of back-end agnostic. We're database agnostic. But what we do care about is the network tab, yeah. which is the thing that tends to come in between the back-end and the front-end, right? It's like... It's like communication middle layer. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. How and when are you loading your data? Mm -hmm. How and when are you doing mutations? How does yep. that affect how you need to reload data yeah. and, you know, bust the cache, things like that? The short-term goal of ours is also to be front-end agnostic. Mm -hmm. We do not consider ourselves a React framework. We love mm -hmm. React, and I think React makes a great set of trade-offs, personally. Mm -hmm. For everything I've used, I, I think it's amazing. But I, I totally get it that some people don't want that or some mm -hmm. people want a, you know, a much smaller version. You know, maybe they want to use Preact. Maybe they like Vue or Solid or something Svelte, like that. Yeah. Svelte or whatever. Yeah. So I really don't care of what you want to use for templating. Mm -hmm. You could even just say, I don't want to run any JavaScript on my site at all, which we saw quite a few people do yeah. today. I thought yeah, it was yeah. kind of a fun, like, little theme, like, kind of a little, mm -hmm. it was like a little bonus no to everybody's talk. Yeah. They're yeah. like, oh, and by the way. <laughs> Turn off JavaScript. Yeah, and it yeah. still worked, right? So, but yeah, so the that's, I think, why we call ourselves Center Stack mm -hmm. is because we fit right in that. That's the part that we really, really care about, that we, yeah. we want to provide, like, some structure around is uh, what happens in, kind of in between the front and the back end, and then pick whatever you want on either of those sides. Cool. Well, you gave a little bit of an answer to this in the last question, but kind of as our final question before we wrap up, mm -hmm. sure. can you give us a little bit of a sneak peek at the vision and the roadmap for Remix at all? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> 100%. Yeah, so we've actually got quite a few things that we would like to build. I think kind of depends a little bit kind of who you ask. But so one of the things that I'm really, really interested in is in seeing how many different places we can actually run Remix and how many different use cases that we can serve, right? So right now we actually serve the kind of like traditional SSR use case pretty well. And we can also do really well the very traditional like full page reload whenever I make a, a mutation or a request, right? Yep. Just leave scripts off the page, right? One use case that I actually think would be really cool for us to be able to serve is what happens when like more of like a create React app style app, 
right? We heard John Jensen today yeah. talking about like, oh yeah, a bunch of folks at Netflix, uh, sorry, Netflix, Netflix, <laughs> bunch of folks at Netflix. Um, Netflix plus Netflix. Yeah, yeah, they boot their Create React app and they yeah. ship that and it's just like a client side yeah. thing, right? Like, yeah. and that's a totally legit way to build apps, right? Yeah. I would love to have better support for that. I would love to have better support for so-called offline apps, right? Okay. Or like PWAs, yeah. right? That if you look at the Remix server runtime, it's actually pretty cool because the whole thing is just built on web primitives, which we polyfill on Node because mm-hmm. Node obviously yeah. doesn't have a lot of that stuff. So we polyfill it on Node. A lot of that stuff is already present though in like Cloudflare Workers. It's present in Dino. We heard from Ryan Dahl today. Mm-hmm. Guess where they're also present? In the browser, in the service worker environment, <laughs> yeah. right? What if you could run the Remix server in the browser, right? <laughs> Crazy, right? Yeah. yeah, but like you could keep the same programming model, right? This is the exact same programming model. Request, response, maybe your data store is index DB, or maybe your data store is just some JSON API, which you can absolutely hit from a service worker that's running right there in the browser, right? So like... It's just sort of moving. These server environments are kind of funny. Like you can run it on the origin. You can run it in the CDN now with Cloudflare or workers or something like that. And you can also run it, you know, right there in the browser. I thought it was actually kind of interesting. One of the big inspirations for the Remix backend was the fact that Cloudflare workers actually used the service worker API. And so it felt like you were coding a service worker, but it's running on the CDN. Mm -hmm. But if you're still using that same API, like why not just bring it all the way to the client? Right. I have a good friend, James Long, who is building this app, this uh, called Actual. He's written a bunch of stuff. He wrote Prettier. He wrote this library called Absurd SQL. It was rad, actually, because okay. it, it's absurd because so browsers have this thing called IndexDB. Yeah. Yep. In all known implementations of IndexDB, IndexDB is built using SQLite. Yeah. But SQLite was deemed not a good fit for browsers because they needed more than one implementation in order to standardize something. So they Mm -hmm. said, we can't standardize SQLite in browsers, so we'll standardize IndexedDB instead. All the browser vendors went out and built IndexedDB on top of SQLite, but what he really wanted was SQLite. So then he built the SQLite implementation on top of IndexedDB. So he's got like (laughs) IndexedDB talking to in. Yeah, he's got SQLite it's talking a, to IndexedDB, which it's is a SQLite sandwich powered by <laughs> powered by SQLite. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's a SQLite sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he built this app. That was his persistence layer for a finance app that he was building. Okay. Called Actual. That's why, and that's why he called it absurd because it was yeah, a sandwich. Yeah. But I would love people to be able to build apps like that with Remix, right? Mm-hmm. That would be totally awesome. If people were doing that. So basically, running it in more places. That's definitely one of our goals. Like I was talking about, being front end agnostic. That's definitely one of our goals. Mm -hmm. Another goal of ours is to, we really want to pave the way for React Router apps to become Remix apps. React and React Router give you a lot of leeway, right? It's, you can build an amazing experience with React. You can Mm -hmm. also build a really terrible experience with React. And so what we want to do is by building Remix, what we're hoping is like, we're kind of putting some of the bumpers on the bowling lane a little bit Mm -hmm. to help you roll a strike with React. So what we want to do is kind of pave the way for people who are using React Router to give them a a compiler, give them a server runtime, Mm -hmm. be this kind of center stack layer for them to help them build really, really great apps with it. So that's all the stuff that we're kind of focused on in the moment. And then, you know, there are a couple of like odds and ends, like we really should have, you know, a better story around image optimization that's, again, built on web standards. We've thought a lot about it and we're, you know, we, we should take care of that, but... I consider that stuff kind of like low-hanging fruit. And then another big, just a really big thrust of ours is just education. You know, this conference, the meetup groups, Mm -hmm. the documentation that we're writing, Kent's working on an egghead course, just all of the stuff that it takes to like just help people build great apps. Because right now, I feel like we're, I kind of mentioned it in my talk, I feel like in some ways, like we're still giving people a, a... a basketball and telling them to kind of do a slam dunk, Mm -hmm. but knowledge really is power. So the more our company can do to empower people to give them the knowledge that they need to like really take advantage of the tools that we're building, Mm -hmm. the better. So that's a huge focus of ours as well. Education. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think the egghead course is live. I got an email about it today. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's live. We, uh, <laughs> I think was tweeting about it earlier today and I want another one. Oh, we're, we're going <laughs> to make another, another one. one. <laughs> another one. You heard it in your first You know what? Post. Don't ask me what's going on. Just ask Kent what's going on. <laughs> he knows. Amazing. Amazing. Well, thank you so, so much. This has been an yeah. awesome yeah, conversation. I learned so much. Thanks and for having me. thanks to the conference for having us as well. Yeah, this, this is been great. A really thank great you. episode. Cool. Yes, thank you to Kent, Michael, Ryan, and all of our friends at Remix for inviting us to the conf. What other events should we help make awesome? Let us know at jsparty at changelog.com or on Twitter, we are at jspartyfm. If you're jonesing for more Remix content, go back and listen to Kent and the gang on episode 215. Here's an appetizer. And so Remix, what really differentiates it is it builds a solid bridge across the network chasm where you can have the power of a backend framework and super, super fast loading times, but also the power of a front-end framework that interacts with that network really efficiently. And so from the developer experience point of view, you don't have a state management library. There's no global state management to speak of at all with when you're using a Remix app or developing a Remix app. So the question of like, does Redux work with Remix? Well, yeah, it does, but why would you do that? You don't need it. And the same with like GraphQL. Yeah, you totally can use GraphQL, but you're gonna use it on the back end with the back end portion of your code. The front end doesn't need to bother with shipping that enormous GraphQL client. And so with Remix, we, we take a lot of stuff that people are doing on the front end and we're moving it toward the back end and so we, we ship less code because Remix is managing that network chasm for you rather than you having to bring in a bunch of libraries to try and, and piece together. Now is a great time to subscribe. If you haven't already, head to jsparty.fm for all the ways. And hey, maybe you should share the show with a friend. That'd be pretty cool, I think. Thanks again to Fastly for their blazing fast CDN, to Breakmaster Cylinder for their blazing hot beats, and to you for listening. We appreciate you. Next up on the pod, K-Ball, Nick, and Allie ask a very common question, WTF, JS? They also talk maintainable code bases and what's going on in this current moment in tech. That's going to be a good one, so stay tuned. We'll have it ready for you next week. <laughs>